I'm Steve from This with Cars and today I want to take another look at Barn Sprite number two. Today I want to put the master cylinder in, get the clutch working, and rebuild the carburetors. And hopefully after all that we'll be able to take it outside and take it for a drive. I'm going to do the carbs and the brakes simultaneously so I'll get both of them unbolted now. That way when I have the carbs and the ultrasonic cleaner I can be working on the brakes or vice versa. So I'll just get these off. When you're doing the master cylinder, you could take it out without taking this whole assembly out, but I find that it's a whole lot easier to just take the pedals and this bracketry out and swap your master cylinder that way. So you just need a 7 16 socket to take these bolts out and the whole assembly will come out of there. the master cylinder removed I want to get the carburetors out of here as well take them out uh, bolted together still then I can do it all on the bench it's a lot easier than doing it here once you have the pedal assembly out of the car it's actually very easy to replace the master cylinder it just uses two bolts that pass through the master cylinder, just like on a Morris Minor. And you don't really have to take anything else off. You just take the two bolts off, put your new master cylinder in there, and call it done. A lot of times this cavity down here is filled with all kinds of crud. Uh, you know as brake fluid leaks down here, it will eat off all the paint and rust it out in here. This one is in incredibly good shape. Usually you don't see these in such good shape. So it makes me wonder if someone has repainted this once or if this car just really doesn't have a lot of miles on it. And there we have it. The master cylinder is ready to be put back in. I'll just pull my two plugs out right there hook up the brake lines and it'll be ready to bleed and here's the carburetors you can see the condition of them a lot of dust looks like there's a lot of red overspray all over them these are the original air cleaners for these carburetors and these are also smaller the mark one sprites use smaller carburetors than all the rest of the sprites did and this is a much more antiquated design than the other models use uh, one big upgrade is to take the newer carbs and intake manifold from a different Sprite and put it onto a Mark I Sprite. And of course, many people swap the entire 1275 engine from a later Sprite into these Mark I Sprites, which gives you a much better engine and a lot more power. I can feel that a lot of parts on this carb are loose. That's why it was leaking so bad. Also, it's missing some screws especially here on the top of the dash pots. So uh, I'm not sure what was going on. Someone must have taken this apart and did not reassemble it fully. So I'm gonna disassemble this, reassemble it, and we'll get it back on the car. I have the master cylinder reinstalled now. So the next thing I need to do on the clutch side to make the car drivable is replace the clutch slave cylinder. And that's underneath the car. Uh, next to the transmission. Luckily, the slave cylinder on the Mark 1 Sprites do not use a hose, so it's actually a hard line all the way from here down to the slave cylinder. Right here is the old slave cylinder. It's just held on by two bolts, and of course the hard line is connected right back here. So I just need to undo the hard line, the two bolts, and this rod will pop right out, and I'll get this out and get it replaced. I've run into a little problem. The bolt that holds on the slave cylinder on that side is actually hitting the frame and it won't come out any further. So maybe the transmission mount has collapsed a little bit. So I'm gonna take a jack and I'm going to try to hold the transmission up with this jack. I'll crank it up and push up on the transmission and hopefully I'll be able to get the bolt out then. There we go, now I have enough room 
to get the slave cylinder out. Here's the new slave cylinder. Looks just like the old one. Just bolt it back up. And then here's the bleeder here. So I'll bleed the air out of the system and I should have a working clutch. While I've been working in this little area, I noticed that there's a threaded hole right here. Now this is for the ground strap that's supposed to go between this bolt and the chassis right here. It connects the engine to a good ground and without that your starter may not run right. And if you have a Sprider midget, a lot of times you'll have work done on the car and someone will forget to put this ground strap back on. So it's a good thing to take a look underneath your car and make sure that the ground strap is still here. So I'll have to get one for this car and get that installed. Most of the time you have carpet covering this and there is a rubber plug that goes in this hole. But this is how you access the bleeder for the slave cylinder. The clutch should be working now. I'm going to go up and push the clutch pedal. We should be able to watch this rod come out and push the clutch in. I did change all three of the brake hoses. Obviously there's one on each side in the front. And then it has a single hose in the back right here. And then it's hard line that splits off to each side. So now with the brakes bled and the clutch bled, if I put the carburetors on, I should have a drivable car now. While I've been working on the clutch and the brakes, I've had the carburetor part sitting in the ultrasonic cleaner. So it's time to start pulling them out. Them right there. And wiping them off and getting them cleaned up and reassemble it. You can see how much better these parts look than when I took them apart. They had all that red overspray on them. They had grease, they had oil. Now it's perfectly clean metal. So I think you get the idea. Put the parts in the ultrasonic cleaner, let it clean them up. Then uh, take them out, clean them off, blow through them uh, with an air gun, make sure all the water gets out. Once you are to this point in the assembly, this is where you need to f set your first initial setting. And we want to bring the jet. You can see it moves up and down as I pull the choke up. So the further down that goes, the more fuel that you're going to get. Well, to start our initial setting on this, I want to turn the nut on the bottom to bring that up flush. And that's where we're going to start from. You don't actually thread it up until it stops moving. You want to try to get that as flush as possible. So taking a real flat piece of metal that you can stick in there and feel when it's actually flush is a good idea so that you know that you have it in the exact right spot. Now that I have it in the starting position that I want, I've shown you this before, I like to mark the face on the nut that is facing forward so you remember where you started from. And this will help you keep track of things as you're tuning the carb. And now what I'm going to do to set my initial setting, I'm going to unscrew this nut two full turns and that will be my starting point on these carburetors. The rest of the tuning will be done with it installed on the car and the engine running. And that will be my starting point right there. You can see where the jet is sitting in relation to the top there. When it was installed in the car before, it was much further down. And the choke works very smooth now. Unlike the later SUs, these do not use a spring that sits on here to push the piston down out of the dash pot cover. It actually uses a weight that's built into the piston. So one really important thing is that when you reassemble it, you want to make sure that when you push the piston up, that it freely falls back down. Otherwise, it's going to get stuck. You can see here that the piston moves up and down very freely in this orientation. But if I were to turn the dash pot 180 degrees and hold it in that position, the piston sticks and does not fall back down. But if I return it back to the original position, these are such finely machined parts that now the piston does work correctly. It's important to test all the parts as you're putting it together to make sure that you know where the problems lie. 
Do you remember that I was missing one of the screws for the dash pot covers? Well, when you're searching through your parts bin for a suitable screw, make sure to remember that those are going to be a Whitworth thread. Don't go trying to shove any regular type of screw in there. Yeah, the threads will not be the same. Here they are, all cleaned up and ready to go. This looks like a huge difference compared to what they look like when I took them off. I am going to leave the air cleaners off for now because I have to have them off for sinking the carbs and tuning them. So this is the condition that I'm going to just bolt them back on the car. One unfortunate thing about the Mark I Sprites is that without the air cleaner, you would have to bolt this back on without the air cleaners because that's what works your chokes because this is normally bolted on behind the air cleaners, which makes it a real pain when you need to take these off to change them. And that's why I like using an air cleaner that has a removable front on it. That way you can leave this whole assembly in place and uh, get to sinking and tuning the carbs without having to take it all apart. I have the carbs back on. Let's see if it'll start. I'm going to hold the chokes up to help it start. This does have a mechanical fuel pump, so it'll take a minute for the fuel to fill up the fuel bowls before it'll start. Well, I think it's finally time. Let's see if this will drive. Ignition is on. Full starter. See if the clutch works. It does. I don't have any mirrors right now, so you have to be careful backing up. Well, there you go, Barn Sprite number two is now drivable. It's not really drivable on the road yet, but it does run and drive. I've had to throw some used parts at this car. I put a rear end in, I had to get a drive shaft, and I used two screws for the carburetors that I had sitting around. As far as new parts, I put in a master cylinder, a slave cylinder for the clutch, and all new radiator hoses, and some spark plugs. So besides that, the ignition system is all like I found it in the barn besides the spark plugs. The carburetors, I haven't thrown any parts at it besides the two screws. All I've done is clean them and put them back on. 
Hopefully in the next video I'll be finishing this car and getting it ready so that I can sell it. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.